In 2019, I planted my very first sweet potatoes and had the best harvest I could ever imagine. In about a 60 foot row, I harvested 95 pounds, which I thought for my first year was incredible. So in 2020, I wanted to try again. Was it just beginner's luck or can I reasonably expect to harvest 100 pounds of sweet potatoes in 60 foot row every year? But not only that, I wanted to compare how the sweet potatoes grew in my ground bed, to a raised bed, to even containers. And hopefully from this video, you can learn what might work best for your garden too. For all the sweet potatoes that I planted this year, I used the ones that I harvested in 2019. I developed slips on those indoors probably in the early part of April, and then I planted those slips out at the end of May. This is the first time I've ever grown sweet potatoes in a raised bed, only the second time I've grown them. So I'm really excited to see what the harvest is going to be. And I planted five of them. The plants completely overgrew this raised bed, but I think that's going to yield a good harvest. Now I am harvesting a little bit early. They just started to flower. Last year I didn't harvest until, I did one harvest in September and one in October. The one in October yielded the best last year, but I want to get some more root crops in here for the fall. So right now it's late August and I'm going to see how big of potatoes I ended up getting, harvesting a little bit earlier from this raised bed this year. harvested three plants and this bucket is already full. Let's go to the next two. It took me about eight minutes to harvest all of these potatoes. I haven't weighed them yet, but I am pretty impressed with this harvest. This is only from five sweet potato slips. One thing that I noticed as I was harvesting these in comparison to harvesting in them in the ground is it was a lot easier to harvest them. Even still, sweet potatoes are a little har harder to harvest than regular potatoes are because they are really entrenched in the soil, maybe because I was using more of a hand trowel instead of a shovel because I was in a raised bed. But then sometimes you just have to really work them to get them free, and then you do have to be more careful with them so as not to blemish them. This one in particular I worked really hard on, but I ended up obviously getting it where it cut in, in two here. So I will definitely use this first. This will not be a candidate for storage, but the ones that I didn't blemish that are still intact, these are going to be perfect candidates for storage. My last year's crop properly cured lasted almost an entire year. So, so far I'm really impressed with how these sweet potatoes did in this raised bed garden bed. Now I'm getting ready to harvest the sweet potatoes that I planted in these grow bags. Honestly, I don't have a whole lot of expectation from this because this was not something that I planned on. What ended up happening is I grew all of these potato slips inside. I had more sweet potato slips than I could fit into my garden and in my raised bed. And then I had extra grow bags with some extra soil. So I just put them in the grow bags to see what would happen. I didn't fertilize. I didn't add anything special. And I just don't, like I said, have a whole lot of expectations, but I am kind of curious considering that they ended up growing pretty well. You see some pest damage, but for the most part, they did okay. They haven't flowered, which was kind of strange, I thought, because both my in-ground sweet potatoes and the ones that were in the raised bed have flowered a long time ago. These haven't, 
but it has been almost four months since these have been in these grow bags. So I guess the only thing left to do now is to dig them up and see what we've got. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is clip off the vines. It'll make it easier to harvest. So for that grow bag, pretty much what we've got, let's see about this one. In two grow bags where I didn't focus on them at all and in hindsight I realized I don't even think I planted the slips. I think I just took some of the sweet potatoes that I hadn't cut the slips off yet and I just stuck them in the grow bag which that may have made a difference not really sure but I could, did get a small amount of harvest so kind of a meager little harvest but when you don't do much with them and there's really not a whole lot you have to expect. So. Let's see how these compare to the ones that I planted in the ground. We finished the final harvest of the in-ground garden sweet potatoes, and though I haven't measured or weighed how much we ended up actually getting, I can kind of guess that I don't think I got as many as I got last year, which honestly, I'm not that surprised. This area of the garden has typically not produced as well in the past in general, and it was also the place in my garden last year where I mulched with hay and it ended up being contaminated with herbicide. I was kind of curious if maybe that would impact this sweet potato harvest. I'm not sure if it did or not, but it still was a good harvest. I'm very happy this is more sweet potatoes than we can eat in a year. Um, there were a couple of factors that I think played into the harvest, and this is complete guess, but I noticed on this side of the garden where I had marigolds, I didn't plant the marigolds. They've been volunteering in my garden from 2013 when I had my first garden, I planted them here. I noticed that the harvest where the marigolds were, the harvest was much smaller. I had a lot more sweet potatoes that were more of this size. And then on the other end of the garden where I didn't have marigolds, we had a lot more that were like this size. I'm sure there could be other factors involved too. This side of the garden is lower elevation, so more water collects there, it's possible. Um, it could have been a more heavier clay. I mean, there could be lots of different things, but I am curious if the marigolds played a part in it, I just don't know. But it's definitely something that I'm, I'm thinking about. Another thing that I noticed in comparing the harvest of this bed and the raised bed in particular, and, and also the container, is that the labor involved in harvesting from this ground bed was way more. I know it doesn't help that we have naturally clay soil, so it took a lot more effort to dig in and get the potatoes. They were harder to harvest. Um, but in general, harvesting from the raised bed when I had so much more loose, friable soil, I mean, I was harvesting, like I said earlier in the video, 22 pounds in eight minutes, and this took about an hour, and that was after we had already cut back all the vines. So 
Um, I'll be curious to see how much this actually weighs. But overall, I thought it was a good comparison. And before we go, I wanted to show you how I cure my sweet potatoes because curing them is what's important to be able to get them to last as long as possible on your shelf. After harvesting sweet potatoes, it's important to cure them for a period of time before you eat them. This allows the starches to turn to sugar, that way the sweet potatoes will taste good. And it also allows their very delicate skin to harden up so that they can last a little bit longer. And if there were any minor nicks while you were harvesting, a lot of times those will heal up as well. The key with curing sweet potatoes is that they need to be cured in a hot and humid area that is sheltered. So you're looking at like 85 to 90 degrees with about 85% humidity in general. And where I live in Arkansas, that is not hard to come by even in September. I think that's one reason my first year's crop ended up lasting so long was because I was able to cure them perfectly for about two to four weeks and then the weather ended up cooling naturally to their optimum storage temperature which will be 55 to 60 degrees. I cured them and I stored them both in my garage last year. This year I ended up curing them in this shed and I will probably go ahead and store them in the garage as well just to keep them at that 55 to 60 degree temperature over the winter as long as possible. These are the ones that I harvested from my raised bed a couple of weeks ago. They're ready to go. I've already eaten some and they're great. These will need to be transferred to be able to cure before we eat them. A lot of people ask me, how do you know when to harvest your sweet potatoes? And if you look online and you ask different sources, you'll find lots of different things. I could never really find one cut and dry answer, but I'll tell you my experience with it. A lot of people will harvest them when they start to flower. And I did that with my raised bed sweet potatoes and they ended up doing fine. They had been flowering for a couple of weeks and obviously they were very large. Some people will say to wait until right before your frost and if you live in an area where you have very short growing seasons such as in the northern U.S. you may need to wait that long because sweet potatoes take depending on their variety between 90 to 150 days or so to mature so you need to know the variety that you're growing and about how long those varieties take to mature. With these two varieties, I have Beauregard and I believe it's Garnet. Um, it's been about four months since I planted them at the end of May. I'm harvesting at the end of September, so that worked out really well. So all that to say, I don't think there's one cut and dried answer. I think it just kind of depends on what you find works for you in your garden. And also allowing yourself, if you can, to have a few weeks left of hot and humid weather to be able to cure them properly for the best storage. I hope that this comparison of the raised bed and the ground bed and the container methods of growing and harvesting sweet potatoes has been helpful for you and it will help you to be able to make a great decision on how to grow sweet potatoes best in your garden. Mm -hmm.